Well, I'm back from vacation. Sorry about that last video there. That was a little bit weird. A little Arizona river trip. Figured I'd jump back on the e-cells, head over to my buddy's house, and steal his cruiser, his wired cruiser. Go we'll take that for a ride. Now that I've got a little over 800 miles on this thing, figured a good time for me to go jump on the wired cruiser, see if I can note any major differences other than obviously it's a cruiser and this isn't. I took the rear bag off. I'm sporting a backpack today with my stuff, lighting up the rear end. Let's head over there and steal a cruiser. Go for a little evening ride. I'm not saying anything. All right, got over to my buddy's house. I'm gonna steal his cruiser. I really do like the look of this bike. I like the color. He picked a good color. Go for a ride in this thing, on this thing. head down to the beach. I'm gonna keep his pack on there. It's weighted down. He's got his lock and he's got you know, it's about the same amount of stuff I usually keep in my pack when I ride with my pack. The seat is unbelievably big. I'll have to get used to that. Thing's huge. This has the Hellbender headset installed. It was installed from the factory when he got his bike. He didn't have to, he didn't have to put it on. Let's head down to the beach. All right, well, right out the gate, one of the biggest differences on this bike is the stinking seat. It is a couch cushion. It, it makes riding with no hands less fun, I think. So you get a lot of the control of the bike from the seat, being able to maneuver that there. For some reason, when I let go of this bike, it wants to lean to the left. So you have to fight that, which my bike doesn't do. The uh, steering up on the front, you just feel is very, very stiff. It's almost like that of a motorcycle versus a bike. It doesn't feel wrong necessarily. It just feels um, a lot tighter, I guess. Very stable, it, you know. It, I wouldn't say there's something wrong with it. It's just a lot tighter than mine. Very comfortable. Got the rear suspension set down all the way on the soft setting and this cruiser is living up to its name and this lazy boy seat that he put on it i don't know maybe i'll get used to it i don't really like it at this point i mean i guess it's comfortable but I, it just feels awkward to me my legs keep hitting it every time i pedal So my buddy only had 97 miles on this bike when I took it out today. So it's probably just got like 100 miles on it now compared to the 833 that I've got on my bike. And we got our bikes like within a day or two of each other, I believe. I've been riding mine a lot more than him. I feel like this sits a little bit lower, that my hands are down a little, little bit, like the handlebars sit a little bit lower than my bike. I'll have to check that out when I get back to mine, but I feel like with my bike, my hands are up a little bit higher in a slightly more comfortable, a little bit more upright position. See this bike, it wants to lean. Once you get it, it starts tracking, it's fine, but it's definitely different when you let go. Like it, it feels like it wants to go one way or the other. Once you get it in control, it's, it's pretty mellow, pretty chill. I 
and I don't want to over talk this saddle. I know I've been talking about it a lot, but just the difference you feel between this and a traditional, you know, skinny mountain bike style seat that I like. The side to side sway on this is just, just crazy. It's huge. You're, just, you're, you're rocking back and forth as you're pedaling, which just, it, it feels so awkward. I'm sure it's got something to do with why it, it, the bike wants to lean when you let go of the handlebars. Just have to be deliberate <coughs> when you let go <laughs> and careful. <laughs> with your body sway as you're pedaling. Then, you know, once it doesn't, if it doesn't go, start going, then you're all right. Ah! Well, I didn't deflate the tires, so we'll see how this goes. I'm only planning on going a short way, so I don't want to go through the trouble of deflating the tires and then reinflating the tires again in just a second. Ah! It does make a big difference though, when you deflate the tires. Ugh. It's not quite dark yet, but that headlight seems pretty bright. A beautiful place I live. Sounds like there's some sort of shindig going on over here. Yeah, I just said shindig. Deal with it. <laughs> oh, they allow camping on the beach in Ventura now? Camping and open campfires. Is it loud down here on the beach now? How about that? You know, in some places you pay a lot of money to camp down at the beach and have an open fire like that. In front of the Aloha Steakhouse, you get to camp out and have a fire and sleep overnight. He had a tent down there a couple of nights ago. Probably bring that back out a little bit later tonight. This bike feels very comfortable. It's a nice seating position. And I feel like I could sit on this bike and cruise, you know, this aptly named bike cruiser for quite a long period of time, quite comfortably. The more I ride, the, the more this really awkward seat becomes a little bit more bearable. A little bit less awkward. I suppose I could see myself getting used to it if I put in enough miles on it. It's, just, it's a nice bike. It feels tight on the front end, if that's explainable, but also very nimble. You know, I can turn I could go through a nice set of tight cones if I wanted to, you know what I mean? It's a nimble bike, but it just, it feels solid. I could make it feel not solid.
Another manhole cover. I seem to be hitting all the manhole covers. In case some of you don't know where this little section of bike path is between uh, Midtown Ventura, not quite Midtown, <clears throat> and uh, Harbor over here. I'm coming out of Harbor, Harbor Keys. They call this yeah Ventura Keys some of the letters are missing but that's what this is called so I'm popping out over here on the Harbor Boulevard and unfortunately there's a lot of cars right now so I'll wait for that to not be happening all right now that we're not gonna get ourselves killed, we shall cross the street right here, immediately leaving that neighborhood. Right up onto this little dirt section. Up and over the little aqueduct thingamaboober. Is that what you call it, aqueduct? I mean, I guess technically that's what it is. Make a left here, turn on this path. Now the sun just went down, so I feel a little bit comfortable taking this path, but, I, and I've mentioned this in videos before, I was kind of ambushed on this path. I had a couple of people, a couple of nice fellows, pull part of this fencing across the gate and block the path for me. I actually ran into it and, and got away, thank God, but uh, it can be a sketchy place at night. Now that was like uh, 11 o'clock at night. Uh, it's just, it, don't come down here really late at night, but that's probably true for a lot of areas. Otherwise, I think this path is safe, definitely during the day. Safe. Just, uh, there's a little buffer zone here to my left that they just cleared out. Actually, it was completely overgrown with bushes, but they just cleared it out. And it provided a lot of cover for tents and tarps and things to be set up. And that's been cleared out. So I feel like since then it's it's become quite a bit safer to come down here, uh, even at night maybe, but I still kind of maybe want to avoid this place later at night. Anyway, I'm trying to get through this. You see where it cuts out. And this will probably be a long section of riding of me being boring. I like this bike, it's fun. The throttle is a lot more peppy than my throttle. Mine sort of rolls on and we do have the same kind of similar settings. I mean, these are very, these are pretty much the same controls. The settings are slightly different though. Um, it seems like this one, from what he's telling me, the, the display stuff is a little bit more um, intuitive can control the percentage on each of the PAS a little bit easier and this uh, speaking of percentage this battery reads out in percentage instead of voltage I find that easier to comprehend for some reason I'm not an electrician I'm still referring to my stupid sheet sheet from time to time voltage to percentage anyway so now we just popped out over here into the commercial district here behind market I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop out on the market street right here right in a second so if you're familiar with the area that's this little tiny section of bike path there it is that cuts you right down to the beach or from the beach back in <laughs> This bike feels uh, faster. I, well, we know it's faster. We've raced it and he's, he beats me. So this has definitely got those five extra amps in the uh, controller. Definitely make this a little quicker bike, a little more peppy, slightly more on the top end speed. It's a little faster than the, than the E-Cells Dual Star. This bike did cut out when we were riding together quite a few times. And since then, it hasn't cut out once. It hasn't cut out on me today. 
and it hasn't cut out on him in the, what was it, 97 miles that I had it. <clears throat> Other than that first ride he took with me, it hasn't cut out again. So I have no idea really why it did. It was not overheating. The times in the sand when we were on the beach in that video, it did overheat a couple of times. That did happen on this bike. But I'm talking about the times previous to that when we were up on the path going up to Ojai and this thing kept cutting out and stopping. Really have no idea why it did that. And it's never done it since. So, kind of weird. This light is not going to turn for me. So, I'm going to break the law. Don't sue me, bro. Sometimes we got to do what we got to do on these bikes. Got to get through. As long as you're safe about it, I figure we're all right. You know, the more time I spend on this bike, especially at the higher speeds out here like this, 30 and above, the more it does remind me of motorcycles I've had in the past, where they just it, the front end just tracks a lot heavier. You know, if you start leaning too much a little bit to the one way, you know, it takes a little bit to get it going the other way. And it takes a little bit more of your body movement. It's not really an instability. It's just a, a tracking, if that makes sense. You know, once you get used to it, I have no problem letting go. I would be concerned if it went over a bunch of bumps in rapid succession and I would like have my hands in my pockets. You know, you definitely want to be ready. But it feels very solid. All right, time to trade back. It's definitely a fun bike. I really enjoy riding it. This little headlight is very bright for its size. It does a great job lighting up the, the way in front of you. Good looking bike. Extremely similar to the E-Cells in a lot of ways. I wish it had the dual chain guard so when this thing pops off, because it, it does from time to time if you're going over bumps it'll pop off and then you've got to stop to put it back on and the E-Cells has the dual guard on it. It came with the dented fender. You probably can't see it at night, like most of them came with his dented fender, but in his case, it wasn't bad enough to like rub on the wheel or really cause a problem. I know other people's had it actually crack the, the rack and had more significant problems. He was luckier, but great bike. It's fun. Do not know about this seat. Jury is still, still out on that. Well, I was definitely right about the height difference that I felt when I jumped on that bike. You can see. The support. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the front the end. The on that. This front end rises it up, you know, so high. That one's down a little lower. So when you do jump on the bike, your sitting position is definitely different. Yeah, it's, it's this, it's, it's the fork. Your fork starts right here yep well it got a little darker than i'd like i don't know if we can see anything in the video now but i really enjoyed watching uh watching i really enjoyed riding that uh, that bike it was a fun bike you know i really still love this bike i i the riding position is i think more comfortable in this one being able to sit up higher you know, going off road and being on a trail, this is much more of a, 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 a trail worthy bike. You know, but that's not what you buy a cruiser for. So that's not really an apples to apples kind of comparison. A cruiser, you know, you're not really gonna take that out on a trail. The Freedom, you would, you know, you'd probably take that one out on a trail. Uh, but he didn't buy the Freedom, so I can't check that one out, compare it to this one. Probably can't see anything. Dead of night now. My headlight lights up my way good and proper though. <clears throat> Without being so bright that it blinds you when you go past. This thing was blindingly bright before. 
I think my modification doled it out a little bit was just the right move. I can still totally see what's in front of me, but at the same time, I'm not blinding people with LED lights, giving them light spots in their eyes for five minutes after they see me go by. Woo! All right, well, that's ought to be about it. I'm pretty close to home, just around the corner. Thanks for coming out and riding with me. Don't forget to make it a great day. I know I ended the video out there a minute ago and coming back, but I just feel like I wanted to mention this. <clears throat> I just feel like I wanted to end it a little bit differently maybe. If I'm gonna compare this bike to the Cruiser, which one would I buy? 100% this bike. I would buy E-Cells, Dual Star, every single day of the week. What I'd love to do is be able to compare this bike to the Wired Freedom. Because I feel like comparing this bike to the Cruiser, you know, it's a great comparison, but it's just, it's, it's not a fair comparison because a Cruiser is what a Cruiser is, and this bike is what it is. You buy this bike to go out a little bit more on off-road, trail sort of stuff. You buy the Cruiser to, to cruise. So they're not really similar bikes to compare to each other. I'd love to get a hold of a Freedom and ride that one and see how it compares to this one and then tell you which one I'd rather buy. But for now, I'm definitely sticking with E-Cells. Wired Freedom, send me a, a Freedom. Uh, prove me wrong.